Hello, Traveler. Have you ever heard of a moment of dreams? Oh, that sounds like some kind of sweet drink. <laughs> I'm afraid not. It's the name of an event we started to hold regularly. Dreams have become quite the hot topic in Sumeru, and many people are excited to share the dreams they've seen at night. The same goes for me. The last time I dreamed was when I was but a little child, so I can't help but feel excited and nostalgic about dreaming again. Oh, right. Everyone's able to dream again now. Yes. We organized an event to give everyone with new dreams a platform to freely share their experiences. And thus our event, a moment of dreams was born. So it's kind of like a fireside chat. You could say that. We hear all sorts of wild and fabulous stories every day. Really, why not have a listen for yourselves? Yeah, but to us, dreaming is as normal as breathing. Wait, but if there are free drinks and snacks involved, then Paima might consider it. Oh, really? So you mean, you've already seen many dreams? Mm-hmm. But no need to get so excited. It's really nothing special. No, no, no. We need experienced participants like you to share your experiences with dreaming. Please allow me to address you two as dream experts. Oh, expert? <laughs> Paimon kind of likes it. Now you seem interested. <laughs> Please, follow me to the meeting place. It won't take much of your time. Rest assured, you'll find all the drinks and snacks you'd like there. Wow, how accommodating. <laughs> Sign us up. Uh, but wait, uh, Paimon's getting ahead of herself again. We should see what the traveler thinks first. Uh, why aren't you saying anything? Dream experts! <laughs> Very good. Follow me then. I will hold my head up high. I won't hesitate no more. I will find the strength so I can be the one right by your side. Don't give up, hope shining. part of being an expert? <clears throat> well, I suppose it must be accumulating knowledge and sharing your experiences? Nope! It's all about the title! From now on, Paimon will be known as... Paimon, the Dream Expert! Oh, okay... Sorry to interrupt, everyone. We finally have some real dream experts joining us. Esteemed experts, this way, please. <clears throat> now, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask them. They must be dream experts from another land. Great! Oh, I have a question. Me first! Me first! No rush! Everyone, please line up and ask in an orderly fashion! Whoa, Paimon didn't expect them to be so enthusiastic. 
My question is simple. My everyday life is very difficult, so I would like to become a slime in my dreams. How can I do that? Oh, hi, Magnus! Paimon's had this kind of dream before, so <laughs> she knows a thing or two. The first time, Paimon became an animal slime. Paimon was shot by an adventurer's arrow and flew in the sky all night long. The second time, Paimon became a dendro slime. A group of kids thought Paimon was a radish and pulled out all the grass on her head. Oh, it was super painful. The third time, Paimon became a cryo slime. In the end, Paimon was captured by a chef and turned into a smoothie. And the fourth time, Paimon became a powerful Geo slime and went to take revenge on the forest boar that used to bully Paimon. But then the boar showed up with all of its relatives and Paimon lost again. <laughs> Wait, why did all of your dreams end so tragically? Because slimes are monsters, even though they look cute, they usually cause trouble and end up getting killed by adventurers. Things don't tend to end well for monsters. Believe Paimon. I suppose you're right. They are monsters, after all. I just want to experience a different life, but it seems that becoming a monster would be even worse than my current life. Hmm. Maybe I'd be happier if I became just a regular finch. Or fish. Looks like being an expert is way easier than Paimon imagined. Next! Oh, it's my turn. <sighs> Esteemed expert. I want to know what posture I should sleep in, so I can have the same dream as the one I had last night. Uh... well? Hey! You're supposed to be helping! Um... First, why don't you tell Paimon about the dream you want to have again? <laughs> oh, it's quite ordinary. I sat and chatted with my wife on a sunny day. Listening to the breeze blowing through the valley. Why don't you just find your wife and talk with her? There's no need to wait for a dream. Well, uh, unfortunately, she passed away. Oh! Uh, sorry. Paimon shouldn't have assumed anything. No, it's fine. I didn't make that clear. I just want a chance to see her again. about posture. What you think about right before falling asleep is probably way more important. Oh, is that all I have to do? Think about it. If you're the one thinking about her, and you're the one that'll be dreaming about her, then it'll be easier to connect your thoughts and dreams. You do have a point. I'll give it a try tonight. Thanks for your wise advice. Oh, my turn, my turn. Hum, I want to know the name of the plant in my dream. I want to bring the souvenir box to my room into my dream. I dreamt of a raven flying over the wasteland last night. Does that have any kind of special meaning? Hey, no rush! One at a time! <sighs> Their questions were way too difficult. We don't actually know anything more than they do. We're just more experienced dreamers, that's all. You do have a point. It's more rewarding to explore and contemplate the meaning of a question than to focus on the answer itself. Right now, these people are like wanderers who've starved for three days and three nights and are desperate to replenish their energy. Any explanation they get now is like pure sustenance to them, no matter how good the explanation really is. Oh, and now that Paimon has said that, you know who comes to mind? Bingo! If she was here, she'd probably be making some similar analogy. Unfortunately, she's super busy right now and may not have time for gatherings like this. Dear experts, we have another guest who would like to consult you. Uh, but you saw how we answered all the questions just now. We're not really all that knowledgeable. 
Ah, but this guest is rather special. My question is, why didn't you immediately tell me about such an interesting place? Huh? Nahida? How did you get here? Interesting events like a moment of dreams don't happen every day, after all. No matter how busy things are, I'd still set aside some time to check it out. Anyway, I really didn't expect to meet you here. Oh, right! If there's anyone that understands dreams, it's you! You should be able to help us answer all these questions. You're not wrong. All right, they can ask me anything. The more interesting, the better. Uh, uh... Huh? What's wrong? You were off so excited a minute ago. Why the sudden hesitation? Even so, it's not like I look super intimidating or anything, right? And in terms of reputation and renown, you've also done many great things in Sumeru, yet they didn't even flinch at you. Alas, the interesting questions have all vanished in an instant. It appears I'm the one spoiling the fun here. I'll see myself out. That's not true, Nahida. I don't want to get in the way of the original purpose of a moment of dreams, which is to let people gather here and freely share their marvelous dreams. Now the atmosphere here is like water poured into a container. The water is more secure and settled, but it has lost its free-flowing nature from the river. I just want it to be another drop in the water, not the cold and restrictive container. She's sulking. Um, hey! It's alright, everyone! No need to be shy! The Dendro Archon is really nice, so please just go ahead and ask! Otherwise, she'll leave! Uh, alright. I'll give it a try. Oh, it's the slime guy! Hey, drop the nicknames, would ya? Besides, I don't want to become a slime anymore. Maybe a finch or fish is more suitable for me. I see. So you want to become a small animal in your dreams, right? Why do you think that sounds good to you? I guess I just want to experience something different. My everyday life is nothing but the same. The sky is right above me and the ocean just over the horizon, yet I remain caged in a life of monotony. So, you want to experience something new in your dreams? Mm, sorry, I'm getting a little confused. Why don't you seek out some new experiences in real life? Because if I don't work, I won't have any mora. Sure, I don't want to be out hammering nails and cutting wood every day, but I have aging parents and young children to take care of. By the time this all dawned on me, I realized that my life has already been filled to the brim by trifling matters, and I have no more freedom. But if that's the case, then even if you became a flying bird or swimming fish, you will still be hammering nails and cutting wood in your dreams. The reason is you've already been caged. It doesn't matter what your physical body turns into, your mind will still be stuck in the same predicament. Really? That sounds pretty terrible. Then what should I do? I don't know everything that you're going through, but how about replacing your hammer? Huh? Replacing my hammer? That's right. Having worked for such a long time, you of all people must know what makes a good hammer. Well, of course. A good hammer needs to be heavy enough to drive the nail in with just a couple taps. And the handle has to have a good grip to it, not too smooth. Come to think of it, I haven't replaced my current hammer in quite some time. You should replace it. Then decorate the handle with something you like. Maybe some ornaments, fur, or hard leather wrapping. Then write the names of your children on it. <sighs> that makes sense. I think it'd give me a good boost of energy at work. 
A new sense of adventure often begins with the little things in life. You'll need to become a bird in the air or a fish in the sea. You only need to do your best in life, and all those things you cherish will become your source of happiness. Yes. Yes, I get it now. This is a real eye-opener for me. I'll go and pick out a new hammer right away. No, I should make one of my own. Thank you, Great Dendro Archon. That's our Nahida. Only you would know how to get right to the heart of the problem. Actually, I didn't really understand the problem. Huh? I gave him that advice because I once saw a worker doing the same thing. Whenever he became tired, he would look at some names on the handle of his tool. After a moment, he'd start to smile. It really surprised me at the time. My guess is that the names on the handle were of important people to him. Mm -hmm. After observation, I know this kind of behavior motivates people, but why is that? Is it because of excitement, anticipation, or helplessness? I really don't know. And even if I could know what's going through his mind, it's still difficult to fully grasp his feelings. Oh, Paimon gets what you mean. Huh. Paimon had no idea it takes you so much effort to understand these kinds of things. <laughs> That's why I was a bit nervous just now. But luckily, seeing his happy face in the end reassured me that I didn't say anything wrong. Don't mind me, though. This is just my way of learning. Hey! Don't forget about Paimon! Everyone knows that Paimon's also super skilled at reading people's feelings. Thanks, you two. That makes me feel a lot better. Let's move on to the next question, shall we? I already asked the experts my question earlier, but I wanted to hear the Dendro Archon's response too. What should I do if I want to see my deceased wife in my dreams every night? Hmm, longing for the deceased. Even if you keep reliving those beautiful memories, it will only highlight the emptiness in your real life. If your wife were still alive, she certainly wouldn't want to see you like this, would she? No. I suppose not. But our time together in my dreams is not just reliving our past together. I don't know. Maybe it's because I miss her too much. But it's really as if she had come back to life in my dreams. She even remembers each and every dream. After I wake up and then continue dreaming again later, we can pick up our conversation right where we last left off. That's really amazing. Statistically speaking, continuous dreams are extremely rare. It's almost as if my wife has obtained a second life in my dreams. But the more vivid she appears, the emptier I feel, and the more painful it is when I wake up. I don't know whether to call it a blessing or a curse. Maybe all of this is rooted in your deep longing for her. Were there any unresolved matters or regrets between the two of you? I don't know. I suppose my biggest regret is that I couldn't spend the rest of my life with her. I really felt like I was ready to move on. I wouldn't be so hesitant now if it weren't for these hyper-realistic dreams I've been having. Huh. You know, they say that whatever's on your mind is what goes into your dreams. But dreams are, and will forever be, just dreams. We are people living in the real world. It's not good to be overly obsessed with dreams. All it'll do is fill up your mind and eat away at your thoughts. Yes, I know. That's why I'm also a little disappointed in myself. I still need to take care of our child. And it's probably not good to let her see me in such a state. <sighs> anyway, 
Thanks for your advice, Great Dendro Archon. I'm a little worried about him. I hope he can find a way to cheer up soon. I think I can handle things from here. You don't need to stay here if you find it boring. You're here to have a good time after all. Another recurring dream? Yeah, I'm starting to wonder if it's some kind of hint. Are you feeling any better now? Yes. I think the Dendro Archon made a really good point. I need to stop dwelling on my wife like this and move on with my life. Now that I think about it, my wife and I always meet at a familiar place in my dreams. I know where that place exists in reality, but it's a bit far and dangerous. I don't dare to go there on my own. But... At the same time, I feel as if I should go and have a look anyway. Perhaps I'll be able to move on once I see that there's nothing there. Otherwise, I'll keep on feeling like everything is covered in a haze. Like I'm only half awake. Once I can stop dreaming about that place, I'll probably be able to get my life back together. Actually... You two are adventurers, right? If it's okay with you, could you escort me to that place? Yeah, it might also be a good chance for us to unwind. Even if you can't see your wife there, taking in some nice scenery will definitely help cheer you up. Yeah, I hope so too. All right, go ahead and get yourself ready then. to some interesting place without telling me again? Huh? Wait! Aren't you supposed to be answering questions? I just finished, and I really got a lot out of it. So many interesting and novel thoughts. Anyway, it looks like you're going somewhere. Why don't you take me with you? Oh, there's no need to trouble you, Great Dendro Archon. I imagine you must have many other important things to deal with. No need to stand on ceremony. Besides, I wouldn't have asked to come along if I didn't have a good reason. I wanted to use this opportunity to discuss with you some things that are puzzling me right now. Huh. I didn't know the great Dendro Archon could become puzzled, too. <laughs> I'm not all that different from you, you know. All right, let's go. We can talk on the way. Go for a leisurely stroll. Huh. Do adventurers often go to places like this? Huh. I guess so. So, this is where you always meet your wife in your dreams? Yes, for the most part. Our place is on the summit, just up ahead. When I saw her in my dreams, we didn't do anything but talk about ordinary, mundane topics. I'd tell her about our daughter, Hydar, and she always listened intently. She would also reminisce about the past with me, telling me interesting stories and cracking jokes. It feels like no matter how long we may chat, it's never enough. Sometimes, it's the little things in life that matter the most. This is the part I'm a little puzzled about. I am very familiar with dreams, and normally, they lack logic and continuity. But you said she could remember what you had told her before, right? That's right. She always listened to me carefully in real life, and now, she's doing the same in my dreams. She always surprises me with some details from our lives in the real world. The fact that she can remember such things makes me feel like she's alive. Whoa. That's pretty weird. Well, 
Dreams are kind of weird to begin with. However, the problem is that his dreams have too much structure and continuity. Most dreams are far more fragile than you can imagine. For example, a loud noise outside your window in the real world could cause your dream self to get loaded into and fired out of a big cannon. Another example. If you're thirsty in the real world, then you might find yourself trudging through a desert in your dream. But the appearance of your wife seems unusually stable and unaffected by any outside interference. Statistically, this should be extremely rare. I don't understand it either. But I have no reason to suspect or reject these dreams. They're too beautiful. But I still want to figure out the how and the why. These kind of dreams are novel to me as well. That's why I want to have a look at the scene your dreams have been taking place at. Let's go. Just think of it as a nice little hike to the top of the mountain. Well, he really wasn't kidding. This place definitely isn't safe. No matter. We'll just finish them quickly. Huh? Are you going to fight too, Nahida? Of course. This is all part of our little trip. I see everything. Come a little closer. You're in for a... The scenery here is amazing! It also seems like a great spot for eating snacks and taking a nap. Paimon wouldn't mind spending some time here every day either. <sighs> I've yet to see anything strange about this place. I do not plan to deny the power of longing. Such an intense but unquantifiable emotion could indeed have the power to organize dreams. His wife must be a really amazing person. Huh? Wait, where'd he go? Oh, so you are waiting for me here? Well, guess what? I've brought someone amazing with me today. When the Dendro Archon said she wanted to come with me, I could hardly believe it. I'll bring Hydar once I'm more familiar with the way here. She's been telling me that she really misses you. Huh? What's wrong with him? There's nobody there! Wait, Minar. Don't go that way. It's dangerous. He's gonna fall! Catch him! Whew. Luckily he didn't fall. But what was all that rambling about? He also looks like he's passed out. He's in the dream now. What he said just now matches almost perfectly with the dreams he subscribed to us earlier. Oh, so he fell asleep? And started to have the same dream? I find it a little strange as well, but we mustn't awaken someone while they're sleepwalking. All we can do is sit here and wait. Uh, huh? Minar. Where's Minar? Oh, good! You're finally awake! Uh, what happened? Huh? Sleepwalking? Oh, right. It was all just a dream. The moment I reached the summit, I saw my wife, Minar, sitting there and walked over to her. After I introduced her to you, she seemed a little flustered and started walking away. I told her to stop because of the cliff, and then she seemed to suddenly disappear. A strong wind started to blow around me and the sky grew dark. When I realized something wasn't right, I woke up. That sounds pretty wild. 
Maybe you were just too tired. I don't think so. I slept a lot yesterday, and I don't feel very sleepy now. Maybe we've affected the way his subconscious constructs dreams by following him here. Anyway, all that matters is that you woke up safe and sound. I think I know what happened now. I'm sorry. If it weren't for you, I would have fallen. Let's head back now. Don't come back to this place again for the time being. Oh, uh, okay. Nahida, what's on your mind? Paimon's a little worried now. We still don't have enough evidence to work off of, so it's hard to draw any reliable conclusions yet. But I'm concerned that Ilmon's case may not be unique to him. Oh, right! Come to think of it, there were lots of people from the event who had vivid memories of their dreams. Right. And not only at a moment of dreams, there may be people like this all across Sumeru. We need to understand what's happening and the rate of its development as soon as possible. Then there's no time to lose! Let's head back! Stop standing there, Ilmon! Let's go! Oh, you're back already! How'd it go? We have an emergency on our hands. Please notify everyone here that while they can continue to discuss their dreams, they mustn't try to visit or recreate the locations and scenes that they have been experiencing in them. What? Uh, uh, Alright, if that's the wish of the great Dendro Archon. But could you at least tell me what happened? You all look so serious. I see. I never knew even a dream could be so dangerous. Don't worry. I'll be sure to notify all the event participants and inform the other staff members about what has happened. Using the event registration list, I should be able to contact more people that were interested in dreams and warn them about the situation. Thank you. That would be very helpful. Let me confirm if all of today's participants are still here. Atta has already left. It seemed that he was on his way to make a hammer, so that shouldn't be a problem. Oh, wait a second. Where's Katya? Has anyone seen Katya? Has she already left? Oh, I, I think she already left. She said there was somewhere she wanted to go. Oh no. Did she want to look for the place from her dreams too? Can you tell us where she went? Yes, she did briefly mention it. Somewhere near... Chatracom Cave. All right, thank you. We'll go look for her. Please help us tell the others not to do anything reckless. Sure thing. Oh, who would have known things would have turned out like this? Look, she's sitting over there! And surrounded by monsters! Come on, let's rescue her! Everyone hold hands! <laughs> Come a little closer. <laughs> hey! You're in for a little shock. <laughs> Shake it and stir! She seems to be in the same condition as Ilmon earlier. Yes, but luckily she hasn't been injured or jolted awake yet. Let's carefully move her somewhere safer. See you tomorrow, Professor Aisha. <sighs> huh? What? Why am I back here again? Dreaming? But what about Professor Aisha? Oh, I see. It was all just a dream. Well, that makes sense. After all, it hasn't changed a single bit. Huh? What's it? Nearly 20 years, and it still hasn't bloomed. <sighs> Does it have something to do with your dream? Please, tell us what you mean. Ah, sorry. I'm still feeling a little groggy. Please give me a moment here. <sighs> <sighs> all right. Where to start? Right, this plant. So, Professor Aisha gave me this plant just before she left. 
She was a good friend of my parents, and my first real tutor. She was also an outstanding Amorta researcher. In addition to her extraordinary academic talents, she was also skilled in combat, and would accept lots of work from the Adventurers Guild. Oh, so you mean she's left on an adventure? Yes. When I was about ten years old, she told me that she must go look for the secrets of the Abyss, and that she would be gone for a long time. I grabbed hold of her and wouldn't let go. I didn't know what the Abyss was. I just knew that she was like family to me. She hugged me, and we cried for some time until I fell asleep. When I woke up, I was already back home. She still decided to leave, but had left behind a letter for me saying that I was the person she cared for most in this world. She claimed that investigating the Abyss could help more ordinary people protect the people and things they care about. She had obtained some important evidence during her past adventures. If she didn't set off right away, she might miss the perfect opportunity. Guess Ad Astra Abyssosk isn't just a slogan. She left a seed in the letter, telling me that if it sprouted and bloomed, then she'd come back no matter what sort of risky situation she was in. She said she looked forward to seeing me all grown up. But strangely... I've tried watering it, feeding it, everything I could think of, but I've never been able to get it to bloom. I even went to ask the Immorta researchers, and they couldn't explain it either. May I have a look at the plant? Of course. I was hoping the great Dendro Archon could help me solve this problem. Let me see. Hmm... Uh, uh, oh. <sighs> huh? We've never seen that look on Nahida's face before. Uh... She... she looks a little unwell. Um, hold on, we'll be right back. What's wrong, Nahida? You can't tell what's wrong with the plant either? No... I immediately understood what's happening with that plant. I'm just not sure if I should say it. This plant is not known to the academic world. It's a new species that her teacher managed to cultivate by some special means. Judging by its features... I can tell from the moment it sprouted it'll never be able to bloom. <laughs> It can't be! It means that this Professor Aisha she keeps mentioning might have foreseen the danger and was prepared to never return. From my experience observing people, she would undoubtedly regard this as a brutal revelation. When forced to confront such brutal truths, people may break down into tears, talk nonsense, or lose their tempers. I know she has to face the truth, but... At the same time, I don't want to hurt her. Tell me, what should I do? Yeah, that's a tricky one. Um, seems like you've already got a good idea of the feelings she might experience. But wouldn't that mean I'm just pushing it all on you? What if she just gets angry at you instead? It's alright. There are all kinds of people, and the examples you observed are just the most extreme cases. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Let's go back and tell her. Huh? It'll never bloom? But... how is that possible? If a plant is unable to bloom, doesn't that mean it can't reproduce either? All that's left for it to do is slowly wither away. Are you saying... she never intended to return? Seriously? So everything she said was a lie? But she meant well. 
Since the separation was inevitable, she hoped that you would be able to come to grips with such a cruel parting a little later in life. Yeah, her love, care, and attention to you, all those warm moments were real. I guess she had hoped that you could understand and respect her choice after learning the truth. I see. Sorry, I don't want to sound ungrateful, but it's just... Just so much to take in. The dreams are so beautiful. Yet reality is heartlessly cold. I really thought she had come back. I had so much to tell her. These dreams may not be as pure and beautiful as they seem. Some kind of power may be exploiting your feelings. Huh. Really? Yes. So with that in mind, until our investigation is completed, please return to the event and ignore any further temptations from your dreams. I see. Thank you for rescuing me. And sorry for the trouble. Luckily, the plant didn't get hurt either. Otherwise, I wouldn't have anything left to remember her by. Thanks, Traveler and Paimon. She seems to have finally accepted the truth, but I think she'll still need a long time to come to terms with her feelings. I saw her waver the moment you mentioned love. It was almost like a gentle ring, arriving just in time to put out a fire that was about to spread. It's because people have something called empathy. Empathy? Hmm, I see. This is valuable knowledge indeed. By the way, you said there may be something that's trying to exploit their feelings. Any idea what that might be? Yes. What's common between Ilmon and Katia's cases is that they've both lost someone dear to them. And now, they get to meet the people they cherish in their dreams again, and the people feel more real than anything a regular dream could hope to create. Instead of interpreting it as a result of their longing, I have to consider a more antagonistic explanation. Someone is taking advantage of their longing. Yeah, they're just causing these people to dream. What are they after? This is exactly what we need to investigate. Anyway, let's pay another visit to a moment of dreams. I have a bad feeling about all this. I hope things haven't gotten any worse. I wandered the wilderness for quite a long time before arriving in Sumeru, and I've eaten everything out there countless times. <laughs> Edible or not. Since I'm familiar with the wilderness, the work of a forest ranger seemed a natural fit for me when I arrived here. If they did courses in wilderness survival, I'm pretty sure I could pass. Uh, well, as long as there was no written test. <laughs>